So is the polar bear a worthy opponent to the panda? And why did Omega decided to release a white down now? What's up people? Welcome to my channel. Today we'll be chatting about the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Professional and what's the diff between the white and the black and see if this polar bear is a worthy opponent to the panda. Good. Apologies for the flicker, the spotlights at the boutique don't go well with my camera. Finally, after an anticipated wait using equipment forged only in the deep mountains of Wushan, and after spending hours examining the black and the white, I can confidently and unequivocally say that there is absolutely no difference on the case, movement and bracelet used between the white and the black. What? The case is still measured at 42mm in diameter, 13.2mm thick and 47.5mm lug to lug. It is still made out of 316L stainless steel with brush finish on the side with polish finish on the bevel and brush finish on the inner lugs. Between the 20mm lug width remains the 3 links bracelet with a fold over clasp. It uses screw pins instead of pin sleeves to hold the links. The transparent case back here showcases the same 3861 caliber movement with coaxial escapement which is a manual winding with 50 hours of power reserve. Whilst the movement is gorgeous, I personally prefer a manual winding watch to have a power reserve indicator for practical reasons. The crown at the 3 o'clock is embossed with the logo, whereas the chronograph pushes are at the 2 and 4 o'clock position. Before we talk about the differences between the black and the white, I will really appreciate if you could support the channel by hitting that like, subscribe and bell icon as it will help me to carry on to make more videos like this and I'll promise you within a span of 30 days, you will see a full moon again. The biggest difference you see between the black and the white is underneath that dome-shaped sapphire crystal with AR coating. <laughs> Over the course of Omega history, Omega has released a couple of white or silver Dell Speedmaster. Hence, this is not something new. What's new however, according to Omega, is that glossy lacquered finish, which is the first time ever on a moon swatch. Uh, did I say moon swatch? I meant on a moon watch's step down. Because of the use of lacquered, instead of a grainy texture you see on the black, the dial on the white feels smooth as if there is a layer of white paint painted over it. The word Speedmaster is painted in red whereas the rest of the words, numbers and minute track are all painted in black. The shape of the applied indices bears similarities with those in the yellow dial Moonshine Go Speedmaster. The blackened indices that flows down the step down slope are a tad slimmer and longer than the indices on the black dial. And that's because the black dial has an additional painted markings before the loom indices are painted on. Speaking about loom, all of the indices, hour, minute and second hand have loom on them. The hands are all in black including those at the sub dials. The base or circle on the sub dial hands are smaller on the white making it more refined. The tip of the minute and second hands do curve at the end following the slope of the dial. What's new is that the red tip on the second hand pays homage to the protective case on the Alaska One prototype from 1969 as well as the red commander stripes on the astronaut suits. Another additional feature on the white is the circular motif on the three subdials. This reminds me of the circular motifs on the Rolex Daytona. Last but not least, the aluminium bezel on the white has a slight difference with the black. I find the phone on the white to be a bit thicker. Or it could just be me having long sightedness. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. So is the polar bear a worthy opponent to the panda? And why did Omega decided to release a white down now? Why are you white? Oh my god, Karen, you can't just ask people why they're white. White dial chronographs are becoming rather popular and sexy. 
the Omega Speedmaster did fly to the moon and has a good story to it. Furthermore, it's half the price of the Daytona. This white dial Speedmaster is probably the closest rendition to one of the most popular Speedmaster out there. All you have to do is to draw Snoopy on a 9 o'clock sub dial and voila, you've got a one of its kind. I think the Omega does give the Rolex a run for its money. What do you think? Do leave your comments below and let's start chatting. Until the next one, thank you for watching.